Whereas there is a quorum of the council president intending 6 p.m. be it resolved this regular meeting bill for business and minutes of the regular meeting of June the 10th, uh, 2020 be approved. Kevin, will you move it? I'll move it. Pat, will you second it? Pat, second. Linda, you're in favor? Yes. Cheryl, you in favor? Yes. yes. Dale? Yes. Susan? Yes. I'm in favor. Motion uh, carried here. Be resolved that uh, item A1 contained in the consent agenda be adopted. Anybody got any concerns in regards to the? I just have a few questions with Glenda. Um, the first page, page 1249, um, just didn't know who ArmTech was. Colbert's. Okay. And on page here, two, um, I'm just wondering, we have two uh, people that are doing janitor work. Uh, what does, I was just wondering about that. Like, I just didn't know that we had somebody in Webwood. What are they doing in Webwood? Where does, what does it say? It says, um, the child, yeah. yeah, no, they do us public okay. works. And they're doing the graduate. So there's Crystal and here. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, page three, Medical Mart. Medical One. Supplies. Okay, thank you. And page five, uh, number 466. Just wondering what the steri cycle was. Is that is that clinic as well? Okay. Yep. And that's it. Any other questions, anybody? No, nothing here from Susan. No, nothing from Kevin. Nothing Cheryl. from Pat. Nothing, Cheryl. All good here, Dale. Glenn, will you move it there? Yes, I will. Cheryl, you'll second it? Yes. And everybody's in favor? Motion carried. In regards to 8A2, request uh, for tax relief for Waterfalls Lodger. Is there any other business there even inquiry? We have not received any others. Uh, Susan here, I do have some comments. I understand though that uh, their business uh, is 80% American and I, uh, I can see where it would be very difficult for them, whereas uh, some of the other like resorts are more Canadian based. So uh, is there anything that we can do? Maybe. Uh, not give any penalties or we've already implemented that. Yeah, we so, already said so no that's penalty. already. Yeah. Yeah. I just learned that um, Kathy actually contacted me regarding this and um, I just um, basically tried to find some information out for her. I was able to find out for her that obviously there's nothing municipally that we can do. Um, they they've received the provincial um, money that they uh, qualified for. But um, I encourage them uh, to do what other businesses in the area this year are doing that have mostly American clientele to encourage local people to attend instead and uh, uh, tr try to work that benefit, offering packages, uh, you know, daily, weekly for campsites or cabins or anything like that. So she was pleased to hear that uh, little spin on that. So hopefully that'll help some other people out as well. Yeah, because we have restaurants and other businesses there that yes. are in the same predicament this year. Yeah, this is Pat. This, this, this would be a very dangerous door to open. I agree. Because yeah, everybody's going to want a piece of it. Yeah, exactly. Well, where do we stop? I mean, every lodge would be entitled then, and every business is it, it uh, scary. Uh, well, we don't have funds for that anyway. That's right. Yeah. Oh. It, 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 it comes down to that. We just don't have funds. Well, the provincial government is offering, they offered them, uh, uh, they qualified for some leverage for money there. So they are taking that. And um, like I said, I just encourage them to um, look at their local economy and um, get them to help them out. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. any other rate payer. Right. There's yeah. difficulties. Uh, in, in paying the taxes, then it's something we can always sit down with them and work out. But other than that, 
from what I gathered uh, from the letter here and the conversation that, that we had, there wasn't uh, the money that they received. They, they could meet their property taxes, but they weren't able to hire any people to look after the grounds or staff to run any of the, of the facilities. That was the concern. Okay, I'm going to read the uh, resolution. Whereas council is cognizant of the position that the local businesses have been placed in due to the COVID-19 pandemic this year, and whereas council has made efforts to provide some assistance to all ratepayers by way of waiving interest and penalty fees on property taxes and water accounts, but and by maintaining the 2019 tax rates for the year 2020, and whereas the federal and provincial levels of government have provided as access to financial assistance to businesses during the pandemic. Be it resolved that council is not in a fiscal position to provide similar financial assistance to local businesses. And that council encourages local businesses to take advantage of the funding support offered by the federal and provincial governments. Dale, will you move that uh, resolution here? Yes, I'll move it. Susie, you second it? I'll second it. Uh, Kevin, are you for or against? I am for. Pat? Pat in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale, you're in favor? Yeah. And Susan, you're in favor? Yes. Uh, I just want to mention one thing that I know that they are worried about hiring staff and not to, you know, being short on cash for that. They're, the employment option services is still available to them where there's grants. Uh, for them for hiring, so they maybe somebody could suggest that they look into that. In my follow up with them, I will uh, give her that information oh, for sure. Yeah, because they can still call our, even though our office isn't open, we are still providing that service. Yeah. Yeah, because the okay, government thank extended you. it. Thanks, Kim. Okay. And I'm in favor of that resolution. The motion carried. Pat DeLine, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay, Pat has um, prepared the next report for the Asset Management Program Development. Uh, if all of Council have had a, an opportunity to review what she has provided, she can expand a little bit on discussion. Go ahead, Pat. Okay, um, as I stated in my report, um, with the staffing changes that are happening and with the requirements that we have to continue updating and um, upgrading our asset management plan. In 2019, we did the strategic asset management policy. In 2021, we have to have some levels of service and condition assessments in place. Um, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities is offering some funding in order to assist municipalities with their asset management program and uh, thought that we should take advantage of that funding, uh, especially with the changes in staffing that are happening and that have happened in uh, public works. Um, so we have uh, reached out to Public Sector Digest, who were the ones that did our asset management plan previously for us. And they will assist with uh, providing further training. And I've listed the training that they, that they will provide in my report mostly for best practices for data collection and condition guidelines and I think that's really important is the, con uh, the asset condition assessments that we need to, need to do in order to make sure that our um, database is uh, up to date and um, is uh, available for keeping upgraded. Uh, they'll give us some templates, some training, um, they'll also do some data work in helping us to restructure and balance some of our numbers. And uh, they'll do, like, because we have, uh, they house our citywide um, asset database, they will also give us some training on asset management practices as well. And some life cycle modeling, we need some assistance with that. Uh, what we had originally had may not be current. Okay, and right now we just basically go on age-related life cycle. So we need some training in, in getting that up to date. And um, they will also do some GIS data work. In our, in our database, we currently have the Massey Water System and the Webwood Sewer System in the GIS portion of our database. 
we would like to be able to uh, uh, add the road system as well. And so uh, for they've given us two options. Option A would uh, result in our contribution of $9,300. And that would include all of those items that I uh, had just listed. Option B is all of that plus they will give us a risk framework work development. And that would be our share would be 15300 now, the um, Federation of Canadian Municipalities offers a grant up to a maximum of 50000 Okay, so option A is less, gives us less than, uh, than that 50000 grant. And the $9,300 we have in our budget, because when we did the budget, there was a small amount that we could transfer into reserves, approximately 11000 So we can use the 9300 of that 11000 to help pay for this this program. Option B is going to be we would not have enough money in the budget in order to um, contribute the 15300 So I'm hoping that once we get this in place and we get the training, they'll do through webinars and templates, et cetera, et cetera, that some of our staff will be have enough knowledge that they will able to develop a risk framework on their own. Okay. So that's that's where I'm suggesting that we go with the option A. And there's two resolutions on the board. One that to accept option A, unless council wishes to go with B and you know we'll try and see if I can find the extra money in the budget somewhere. And the second um, resolution is a council commitment to uh, for us to apply for the grant and um, the commitment to um, to uh, do the plan as outlined in uh, option A and uh, sort of just basically that that resolution will go to the uh, Federation of Canadian uh, Municipalities as part of our grant application and Public Sector Digest will do the grant application for us at no cost. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I'm not in favor of option A. I'd rather see option B. Because if you look at option B there, the asset management training is free there, and you're paying for the risk the analysis and management. And that's what I'd want to see there, because we did that at DSAB in housing there, and you, you know exactly what's going on in your buildings and your uh, air, all your assets there for 25 well, we did it for 25 years. I don't know what we're going to get it done for at the municipality here, but it's nice to know out in the future where you stand and where you got to do improvements there over the the time frame where you, what at, that you set. If you set it for 25 years, you set it for 15 years. Yeah, I agree, Les. I think the risk analysis and management is, is an important part of it. I agree as well. I don't, like, I don't know where we're going to find the money. We find money for other courses and whatnot. Uh, I, I think if we're going to do this, then we should do the whole thing. Also, that uh, the, the option B is also good because um, it's already included and we don't have to hope that somebody gets trained appropriately for doing this. We, we know that the that training will happen. Somebody do half of it and, and then we'll are expected to develop the rest of it and then we're just kind of directing them. I think that's spreading things too thin, especially yeah. for our municipality. Yeah. Any other comments, sir? Pat? Or? It's Susan here. I, I agree that uh, option B sounds better to me too. Then you're all in, it's not that much more money. And uh, yeah, I'd go for that. Dale, any comment? I'm in agreement with option B. Pat? I'll, I'll uh, agree with you, Les. Cheryl? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I guess it's option B. Not. Okay, resolution. B resolved that we accept option B proposal from a Public uh, Sector Digest for an asset management uh, program development there. Kevin, will you move it? I will move that. And Pat, will you second it? Second. Glenda, you in favor? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. 
Gail? Yes. Susan? Yes. I'm in favor. Motion carried. Very good. Okay, well, I will do my best to find the extra funding in the budget then that uh, we need in order to increase our contribution. Well, Pat, it doesn't matter. We'll take it out of uh, our reserves or if need be there. So. Okay, but that's it's fine. A, but it's a but it's a win win for the municipality. If we're going to do it, we might as well do it all. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so the resolution for the staff be directed to apply for a grant. Um, I think that the wording is still appropriate. Okay. Yeah. If you could read if you could read it out first, please. So okay. I don't have a copy of it in front of me. Okay, be it resolved that council directs staff to apply for a grant opportunity from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program for asset management data and a program analyst in the Township of Sable Spanish Rivers. And be it further resolved that the Township of Sable Spanish Rivers commits to conducting the following activities in his proposed uh, project submitted to, to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, Funding Asset Management Program to advance our asset management program, asset management uh, training, life uh, cycle framework development, improving asset and GIS data. Should that also include- Risk analysis underneath that? Yeah, that's that's risk analysis. analysis and the, the latter part of the resolution Commit the uh, fifteen thousand three hundred. Yeah, that yeah. changes that. Oh, very good. Okay, we added that risk and anal analysis in the management, and further be resolved that the township Sable Spanish Rivers commits to. Fifteen thousand three hundred dollars from the, its twenty twenty budget towards the cost. Of this initiative. When will you move it there? Yes. Uh, Cheryl, will you second it? Yes, I will. Dale, you for or against? I'm for. Susan? For. I'm for it. Kevin? I'm for. Pat? I'm for. Motion carried. Thanks, Pat. Is there anything else anybody would like to address to Pat DeLine while she's still with us? No. Well, I don't think so. Thanks, Thanks. Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Very good. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Uh, so further to the discussions at the last council meeting, council had asked to review the status of the um, COVID emergency, state of emergency by the province and uh, reopenings again at this next meeting. Uh, I've provided to you the uh, Ontario regulations and orders in council that have been provided to us since that last meeting. Uh, there's just a couple of areas where I have highlighted that are applicable to the municipality. For the first one that was approved June 11th, Schedule 2 sets out for businesses and places um, services such as public libraries and it says that they may open and there are conditions with the openings. Um, community centers, they can provide for indoor activities and services other than sports and recreational fitness activities. Change rooms and showers remain closed and there shall be no kitchen use or indoor eating areas permitted. Um, for sports and recreation, facilities for indoor sports and recreational facilities including gymnastics, yoga, dance studios and other fitness facilities are closed. Um, there are subsections that are that exempt are exempt from this, but those relay more to professional teams that want to get together for, for practices and so on. Uh, outdoor sports and recreational fitness activities may open if they comply with the conditions noted. Uh, playgrounds, play structures and outdoor fitness equipment must remain closed. The second order in council approved June 12th uh, uh, indicates that no person shall attend an organized public event of more than 10 people. So small outdoor events, um, non-essential in-person gatherings of any size continue to be st strongly discouraged, 
event organizers shall have in place measures to enable physical distancing for people when they are in the event space and while waiting to enter, such as one-way traffic, marked lineup areas, and timed entry and length of stays. Large outdoor events such as concerts, festivals, parades are not permitted. Uh, for beaches and parks, Ontario parks are providing beach access with measures including limited capacity at some parks to enable physical distancing. The township does not have the ability to oversee the two meter physical distancing requirement. That would have to be an individual responsibility. All we would could do is erect the signage for awareness. So uh, there are township facilities that remain closed. Um, for council to keep track of and oversee when when you feel the uh, right time is for reopening. They would include the Mouth Beach Park, Heritage Park washrooms, uh, marketplace where council had uh, passed a resolution earlier this year saying that uh, maybe later in the season it could be a modified event provided uh, and the township office as well. Uh, with, within the office, we're operating business as usual with building permits, fire permits, cemetery services all being provided. Planning applications are now being accepted. Uh, we have had the Ontario regulation amend their restriction on that, so there's no longer any moratorium on that. Planning Act timelines, um, as far as the emergency goes, uh, shall continue to go as the Planning Act dictates. So we're not turning any, anyone away who requires assistance at this time. Uh, people come to the door and we will meet them and, and uh, from, with a prearranged time and, and meeting. But as we had indicated before, we are getting our protective barrier installed and I think that everyone in the office would feel comfortable once that's up um, and, and council deems uh, services to be open to the public. We would have... Um, you know, a, a, num a limited number. Obviously, our foyer, our entryway at the counter uh, would only require, allow for two people with a six, six foot distancing requirement. We would also do a, a, a listing, a log of people and do the screening that's required as well. Uh, all of our office staff are working on a template. We're reviewing one right now that we can uh, implement for a work plan safety procedure and protocols once we are open to the public, which will help keep staff and the public uh, safe and healthy. Kim, it's Susan here. Uh, do you have any idea when that will be? Uh, like, I know that he had come quite some time ago to take yeah. measurements. Yeah, yeah I, think he's, I think he's going to be able to start installing it this week. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, notwithstanding that, we, like I said, we have no issue with this. Uh, with yeah. with being opened, um, with the emer with the provincial emergency still in place, I know all municipalities are still taking a a step back. But, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 If I I know most of all the facilities where I've been, you know, they have the barrier up and they do the protocol, and it seems pretty streamlined. So nobody, none of the other towns, their townships are. Are open for business yet? Or, well, you well know, they're always open for business. They're always they're open, always, and, that's and mean. they're open for business. But we're we're kind of in a, a unique situation as it is because there's only four full time of us. We have a very large office. Two of us have our own offices, so we can really maintain that distance separation. Yeah. Most sure. most small municipalities have a much smaller um, work area, so they are still maintaining their. Um, their work, work, one week work at home, one week work in the office, and they're rotating oh. and switching up. Not very oh, many oh. people, municipalities, are working full time together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're fortunate that we're set up like that. It is right? because I don't yeah. see how we could uh, be assistance as good of assistance to the public with yeah. just trying to do yeah. it from home. Um, the, there is a second part to this agenda item, and that is a report that I've had uh, Amanda work on that uh, I think she did very well in, in trying to come up with the information and put together a staff report using a template that I had given her. She has, uh, she's really catching on to what uh, she's being asked and providing, providing the uh, documents. So if council doesn't have any uh, 
other um, suggestions or, or issues with what the recommendations were in her report with regards to the United Way local funding application. I'm going to get her to uh, to spearhead this. Absolutely, Steven here. I'm definitely for that. Yeah, sounds like a great idea. Okay. Yeah, Glenda, that's the one Glenda you and I talked about. Yeah. And all along she did ask, and all along they did say, yes, it's nonprofit, nonprofit. But then all of a sudden she got an answer that says, well, if you have a uh, an account with CRA, if you have an uh, account number, it's like, well, we do. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, then you can apply. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's great because I at first I understood it was for nonprofit. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. That's good. Any other comment? Uh, well, are we going to talk about the market, the farmers market? And, and, and now the mouth, you're, you're going to leave it as is, but post some signage. Is that what you're saying? I, I say just leave it. Al I say just leave it alone the way it is there, and I'm not in favor of opening up anything. I, had, I agree with you. I had a meeting down south. I had a meeting there today with EMS there, and Rob Smith said there there was 50 people tested in Massey there this week already. There's quite a few people in this municipality is scared there what's happening to Southern Ontario. And I think we should just sit back for a few weeks yet there and see what's going to happen. Traffic, the increase in traffic in the last two weeks has been unbelievable. And it's like, I personally, I find it a little scary to open up the marketplace. It's a small, we have small grounds there. It's very small, yes. We can't provide washrooms. We don't have anybody to look after our washrooms uh, as, per, as per the provincial regulation. Uh, and the reason I agree is I see a lot of those plates from out of province. And, yeah. A lot of the plates are from out of province. So I, I live on the highway, so I know. It's, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. A lot of them are from BC, and Alberta. Now there, because everybody's, you know, taking their guard down and I I don't have a good feeling about it personally. I don't like the complacency. Uh, we need to keep uh, diligent and uh, keep our, our, our rate payers healthy and you know so I don't think it, it I think we at least need another couple of weeks hope, uh, hopefully we'll have more results test results are being lots tested so um, there's a big influx of tourism, even with uh, this going on, and uh, I think he needs to I understand if it's something essential, like maybe opening up our, our, our township office to do a few more things, but I mean, when it comes to something, I, Mark, it's just not very high on my list there. Sorry. I, I think we should put it on the agenda for next meeting and, and revisit, because that will give us weeks see what's I, going I on. Agree. I yeah. agree. With this I mean, I, I think I, we should talk about it every meeting yes, and see how things yeah. are going in the area. I don't, Absolutely. I won't be going to it because I'm not, I think there's too many uh, people that are not taking this seriously yet. <laughs> I find people around people here are not well, taking it seriously. Well, it's minimal just outdoors. You know, I mean, all the, you know, the, the restaurant. Uh, but it only takes one for patios. Yeah. But it's a browsing thing, and yeah. if you get people browsing, and how do you maintain social? Well, what I was thinking, here's what I was thinking, that okay. we could do it a modified version of it where we could just uh, allow a, a couple of vendors a week at a time and so that, you know, that we don't have this whole crowd there, so if there's just a couple of vendors. Uh, most of them are dealing you know, with produce and stuff, which people like to touch. That's my issue. <laughs> and then they and they start up conversations. Um, Another issue is that we haven't done anything to prepare for a market. We haven't no. had our insurance no. company involved. Yeah. With regards to that. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. We were kind of uh, caught in the middle of all our preparation. Yeah. The farmers market to me is a luxury. A lot of people around here go and and buy their stuff from the people that are doing the farmers market. Well, here. it may be a luxury for people that buy it, but for the sellers, um, that's their livelihood. But that's what I'm saying. Uh, I know a lot of people that go to the sellers. They go so directly. To they the go sellers. directly to the sellers. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so we're going to just yeah. leave it alone there and we'll talk about it in two weeks' time. Yeah. Okay, I got a resolution here. Be resolved that we concur with staff recommendations to submit an application to United Way under the Community Response Fund to be able to provide uh, target uh, recipients with a COVID-19 assistance package. Pat, will you move it? Pat moves it. Linda, you second it? Yeah. Cherry, you four against? Four. Dale? Four. Susan? Four. I'm for it. Kevin? I'm for it. Motion carried. In regards to the volunteer firefighters, be resolved that Tiffany Goodchild and Alex Shea be appointed as volunteer firefighters subject to usual terms and conditions. Cheryl, will you move it? Yes, I will. Dale, will you second it? Yes, I will. Susan, for or against? For. Kevin? I'm for it. Pat? Pat in favor. Glenda? For. And I'm in favor. Motion carried. Okay, so with regards to the blue box transition, I apologize, I cannot uh, speak too long or loud. I can't read my whole report. I had some dental work today, so. Yeah, let's just give the short version. So um, basically, the province is moving towards a uh, full producer responsible responsibility model for blue, blue box operations and services. Um, and they are looking to transition this between 2023 and 2025. Um, the province is consulting with a lot of small small groups as well as, well as um, some businesses and AMO and individual municipalities as well. Um, we, what we want to do is ensure that um, that the blue box program the way we know it won't be interrupted, that the services will remain the same. And uh, I think that we should start or say that we would like to start by June 1st, 2023. That way that gives us um, a couple years or one year anyways, to say that we can uh, go ahead with our current uh, contractor, we can negotiate and we can put that date of June 21st, 2023 into that co uh, contract so that everybody knows and there's no additional fees for, for getting out of it or anything like that. Anybody got any comment? So basically, uh, once 2023 rolls around, yeah. We'll be renegotiating a contract at a lesser amount because the producers will be covering a bigger cost of the blue box. Program, yeah, we, right? that, that is the intent, That's is that the hope, province yeah. is going to do that, yeah. Okay. It's a good direction. Yeah. Well, we're all going to pay for it anyway. Well, but, I know. We pay mm -hmm. for it either way, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, I'll read you. Uh, the short version of this there, the <laughs> there for us. <laughs> Therefore, be resolved the Township of Sables Bank Rivers would like to transition our Blue Box program to full production responsibly on June the 1st, 2023. And that this decision is based on being able to renegotiate a contract for recycling services for a two year period ending May 31st, 2023. And further that the Township of Sables Bank Rivers strongly advocates for language to be included in the regulation that ensure municipalities under 5,000 continue to receive blue block servicing as uh, was agreed as part of the provincial government uh, blue box mediation as well as schools and public spaces. Does that include all the housing units as well? Uh, for most of them, yeah. Okay. And finally, this resolution be forwarded to the Honorable uh, Jeff uh, Urick, uh, Minister of Environment, Cons Conservation and Parks and Association Municipalities of Ontario, the Federation of Northern Ten Municipalities, and Rural Ontario Municipalities Association. Dale, will you move it? 
Yes, I will. Sue, do you second it? I'll second it. Kevin, are you yes. for or against? Kevin, are you for or against? Yeah, I heard you this time. Kevin Pat. is for. Pat? Pat's in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? Yes. And I'm in favor. Motion carried. It scares me when to bring that 5,000 number back into the picture every time you talk about anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I can remember when we had to bring our recycling to the depot in Nazi and it's like, there was no bigger deterrent in the world for anybody that didn't live in Nazi. It was like, come a long way and I hope we can keep the program going. We gotta encourage more people to use it. Yes, we do. I agree with that because I just going around town I noticed that there are a lot of people that are not taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand that. I know. I know. Okay. Review the position of parks and recreation coordinator uh, coordinator. Did everybody look at that there? Has anybody got any concerns in regards to it? Well, I'd just like to say that it's awful expensive. <laughs> and I can't help but think that we're going back to what we had. I agree. So what do you want to change? Oh, I don't know. I just thought we were going to go with a simpler model here. Uh, I don't know. Dale, can you uh, weigh in on this? Well, my opinion on it right now is with the COVID-19, we don't have to rush anything, and I thought we could take some time and plan it out, and I was hoping we'd be able to sit at the table and discuss some of this oh, once absolutely. we're able. Uh, Go ahead, sorry. No, absolutely, I agree with you there. This isn't a, a one-hit a one hit, uh, resolution. No, I, don't I, mean, I, I, I looked at it a lot. It's very detailed. It's very well done. But, uh, I'm not sure where we're going here. How, how uh, I'm not sure how to address this, but really, uh, with, do um, we want to get into a recreation director again? Like, well, these these duties are what um, the last individual who took over had to do. This was all part of that that position. This was pre yeah, this was pre-COVID though. We have a lot of things that have yeah. changed, so I think we really need to look at this and and uh, tweak it to what we're going to be facing in the future as opposed to what we had in the past. So Brad was doing all those, all those duties? Well, I mean, it's, um, it's when, you, when, you, when you look at them individually, it's like on a, on a regular day in the office and at the arena, that's, these are the things that get done. And these are the, yeah. the um, areas of, Responsibility, but with our restrictions, like I yeah. said, we're yeah, going to have to sure. revisit it and and uh, have to uh, kind of hang on to it, really, <laughs> because uh, it changes all the time. So we can't put a position out and then uh, I retract think we it. We need to defer it again, like Dale said. I think we need to defer it to another meeting. Hang on to it. Have a good look at it and and discuss it again. Yeah, I agree, Kevin. I don't think that there's any rush. There's going to be some changes coming down the tubes, and I think that, uh, you know, uh, maybe we can appoint somebody right now temporarily to carry on and uh, really give this some good thought. Yeah, yeah. Right? Agreed. That what you're, yeah. yeah, that's how I agree. Yeah, I mean, business carries on there, but we don't yeah. have to write things in stone just yet. Yeah. So who's going to be in charge at the arena? You've got to designate somebody. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about, isn't it? Next. Just keep putting it off and putting it off. That'll be part of the closed session discussion. Yeah. yeah okay. We're not putting it off. We just have to redesign it now to uh, yeah, okay. accommodate our, our conditions. Okay, let's let's give this serious thought there because there, if the government decides to open everything up there, we got to be prepared there. So, 
the next yeah. meeting there. Yeah. We'll go into closed session there and uh, we'll discuss there uh, what we're going to do in this uh, regards. Everybody in favor of that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm in yeah. favor. Okay. Okay, so I had to circulate a report to Council with regards to um, a portion of Waterfalls Road and the speed limit. Apparently, um, there had been a 40 kilometer an hour speed limit signage posted in the vicinity of Waterfalls Lodge. Um, last year, the Public Works Committee had recommended implementing some type of speed bump placement in the area of the lodge as a result of complaints of fast traffic through there. Uh, while Public Works was reviewing the area, that's when they noticed that the 40 kilometers was there. Uh, I reviewed all of our records and there was no bylaw to ever provide for those. Um, we do believe though and recommend that the lower speed limit should be uh, implemented and approved and Public Works have also indicated that they would like to put some pedestrian signage in that area as well. They are not um, they're not recommending that we put any type of speed bump on the gravel road. It would make the maintenance, grading maintenance, very cumbersome and difficult in that area. Um, so I have a bylaw that I had prepared at 40 kilometers an hour. And I also have another one that I've left blank in case anybody wishes to discuss this in a different direction. The speed limit is being at 40 kilometers an hour, and we know it's not working here in that area here. And I was the instigator there that wanted to put a speed bump to slow people down. If we're going to put a bylaw in place there, I'd like that lower down to 20 or 25. I was thinking 20. Personally, just because I go back there a lot, and 20 seems to be the safe uh, for pedestrians as well as vehicles. And um, I believe that 20 would be the one, the number in that area alone. And it's, once this is in, in place, this bylaw is in place, I will, as uh, always, follow up with the OPP and let them know that this has been a very concerning area and that they please provide some enforcement in the uh, very near future just to uh, let residents and, and people know that uh, it, it is for real. Well, you've got the cabins on one side there, on a corner there, and crossing the road, and then you've got the trailer park on the other end there, crossing the road. So. And there's a lot of uh, traffic, pedestrian traffic as well. So, yeah. I, I don't think it used to be a problem, but there's a lot of homes on Sunset Bay Road, yes. not now, and they all take that way they go in and they go through the lot. And it is a bad area. I don't think 20 kilometers is a, is a bad idea at all. I think it's a great idea because it's a very narrow road there. And you come into it past Black Road, you got that corner at Hump. Well, it used to help me. Exactly, Cheryl. Right? Exactly. And you have to get around that corner, and then you're right at the lodge. And it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think your money is out of uh, range at all. And even more signage, like I know you said signage, but even something warning, reduced speed coming up, and then... Uh, then well, the they have, like, curve like, road signs. They've got all yeah. kinds of signs. It's just people don't... It's like 40 going down uh, through yeah. down here, but nobody goes for yeah. it. Yeah. For very few people. I said I'm going to start right now. Sure. <laughs> numbers, I think. But um, that, that's not, like, like, how many times does that road get graded in a season for the speed bumps, really? I wouldn't put speed bumps, so. No. No, no. I wouldn't either. Yeah, yeah I, I think know. that uh, so, when That's not going to slow people down. And oh, when, yeah, the speed bumps. Well, they all drive big trucks back there. That makes more work for our public works department. I don't believe yeah. the speed bump is a, is going to do anything. I believe the speed limit will do something. And what about that lighted sign that says how fast you're going? And, uh, it, where did they say that ended up? I keep forgetting. Is that the Espanola that Safety? Safety sign? Yeah. I think it was yeah, Espanola Safety Coalition. Yeah. I'd have to try to see if I can get a hold of... Uh, Mike Picor, he was involved in that. At the yeah. lodge, they put raise your right foot, all kinds of stuff like that, and it still is an issue. So I think just acting on the speed itself would be a good deterrent. I mean, and the new sign here. Yeah. If, if we go, we're going down below the speed limit for a hospital zone. And that's, you know. 
Well, it's a bad area. You have a bridge yeah. there as well? Yeah, so you much know? more traffic back there now. It's oh, like a high, a secondary yeah. highway back there. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you have a section or a, a chunk of that solar uh, speed indicator on the trailer. Why don't we get it down there? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out where it is, I think. Well, if we put some money in on it, it's got to be somewhere. And if we've never had it here, it's about it's about time we bring it in. Yeah, yeah I agree. We need let's make use of it. We need a tracker down. Yeah, and that's a very polite reminder to people. They pay attention and they get their foot off of the throttle. And some well, of these cowboys that are speeding are going to continue to speed over the speed bump. What control do they have if we throw them up into the air at whatever speed they're going? If somebody steps out, they're not, they are going to get run over. So I just assume see a civilized method like that that sign on yeah. the trailer. I think that's a perfect thing to start off with right there. Yeah, I agree. Because you know what? They see those numbers and they think, thinking, oh, somebody's watching me. Uh, I don't know if I want to go down and lower it as low as 20 kilometers an hour. Well, when you're going through that narrow road, 20 is quite quite there. I, like I say, I'm down there all oh, the time. I'll, I'll, I'll respect your judgment on that, Glenda. I haven't yeah. been down there. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think the sign is a great idea. We can now work towards getting, trying to get that. Yeah. Okay, the resolution says, it resolved that bylaw 2020-24 being a bylaw to prescribe a rate of speed on a portion of Waterfalls Road be read a first and second time there. Dale, will you move it? So do you second it? We make it all west of Massey with 60 kilometers. Yeah, but so then this will this will set it up for waterfalls. Is that correct? Yeah. All west. Okay. Of yeah, I'd like to make that motion, please. Okay. So do you second it? I'll second it. Kevin, you're for against? I'm for. Pat. In favor. Lynn. In favor. Cheryl. In favor. And I'm in favor. Motion carried. Be resolved that bylaw 2020-24 being a bylaw to prescribe a rate of speed on a portion of Waterfalls Road be read a third and final time. Pat, will you move it? Pat moves it. Cheryl, you second it? Yes, I will. Dale, you for or against? I'm for. Susan? For. Kevin? I'm for. Pat? In favor. And Glenda? For. And I'm in Favor of it. Motion carried. I'm going to type it. Yeah. In. Okay. He signed it. I think our municipality should have one of the flashing signs, and we move it around this municipality there. Because if you drive, yes, out, I'd like yeah. it. Walford Road next. Yes, uh, Walford there, Road. Lee Valley Waterfalls, uh, with Lost Lake Road. Yeah. Yes, I, I think. We'll price them out for next year's price budget that. review. Yeah, I was going to say that too, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, anybody tonight, there? Uh, I will have one thing. Um, I guess they've been selling garbage tags at the Webwood Library. Are you folks aware of that? Yes. What do they no, sell? I think so. No, we, uh, we've only been advertising them here. The, uh, they've been doing it with the uh, curbside pickup, doing it the same way as the curbside pickup. Okay. I mean, I, I have to ask. That's fine. Half if that's okay. Yeah, they're probably just using inventory that they have because they haven't received any more from the office. Oh, okay. So they can oh. just, yeah, when they need more, they can bring in the... Uh, the, the revenue from the tickets sold and I'll keep track. The, uh, the library, with regards to uh, opening and stage two, yes, we're allowed to uh, open our doors to the public, but nobody's allowed to touch any books. <laughs> That's right. So yeah. Yeah. What's the not point? Not really sure where to go with that. Uh, yeah. If we do open, computer usage will be down to three computers. Uh, we're still looking at a plan, and, and for now, it's just curbside pickup. That's I working well. I think that's well. a good idea. Yeah. 
That's working real well. And uh, our, our e-book program, which we almost gave up on last year because yeah. we only had like 100 a year, has had 75 in the last month. So I had a resurrection. Yeah, that's doing real well. Um, one other thing, uh, there's a question about the trapping uh, that's being done on Lee Valley. Is Rob Rowe doing the trapping for us again or what? I'm not sure if he is doing it currently, but there is somebody in place who's willing to take anybody's area if they don't want to be doing it. Yeah, I know. I know. So, I mean, whatever. I'll talk to Jacques about that again sometime. I had a chat with him the other day about coming up here to do some work with the back so That's all I have. Dale here. I got something that's some rate payers have approached me on. And that's the uh, the dumping out on uh, over by Steve Bradco's there, the sewage dumping. Yes, on Hannah Road. Yeah, is that? Uh, I was told that there's some days twelve to fifteen trucks dumping there. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, I was told that there's twelve to fifteen trucks dumping there on some given days. Of garbage? No. Of uh, sewage. Oh, sewage. Oh, sewage. Yes, because the, most likely the fellow there that's coming from Whitefish will set it up there with a bunch of clientele there and yeah. do a half a dozen at the same day. Yeah. So how does that work? Does he pay to dump it there? Yes. yes. Yeah. And is it an honor system? Yes. There's nobody there to, to monitor it. He Those companies are, they sign out a key. Nobody to and and sign for it and uh then they have to give us an itemized list of the properties that uh he's dumping from okay and so i'm just a little bit concerned when i heard the numbers of 12 to 15 trucks uh on some days and most days there's somebody dumping there that sounds like a lot of friggin sewage going in there considering there's people with concerns about water table and whatnot so I was asked to bring that forward as well as is there a gravel pit back there or is that something we're still using or not? Yeah, our gravel pits on the same property. Is it still in use or are we just going to empty it out? No, our, it's still in yes. use. Okay, yeah. is there a way we can better monitor then that sewage situation before we end up in trouble? I mean, uh, I'm just wondering maybe we're being cheated with this honor system. I'll talk, I'll uh, work with Public Works and see if they know more than I know, and then we can go from there to see if there's a, a better, different solution. Okay, and well, is. Companies are always giving us the names of the clients that they're uh, cleaning out the septic tanks. It's not hard for anybody to just, a uh, staff that is to just call to just double check to make sure that. You know, just as a random check every once in a while to make sure that they did get service. Yeah. Yeah. It's an easy fix. Okay. And as far as the MOE goes, uh, is there a date in mind that that thing will have to be discontinued, the usage of that place? Not at this time, no. Okay. And we have we have regular monitoring from Pynchon on it, so. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a little in the dark. So what exactly does he dump into? It's uh, like a lagoon system, like cells. Oh, They're cells. Trenches. There's three. Sorry? Trenches. Yeah. Dumped into trenches. Oh, okay. There's three or four of them there. All right. And that's and on Hannah Road? Every year. Yeah. That's on Hannah Road? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. That's okay. I learned something new today. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, Kim, you no, I'm good. If we're not going to do any uh, further discussion in closed session, no, we don't no. have anything else. No, not okay. No. In, uh, re in regards to the next meeting there, could you everybody think about it there? Man, Manitou and DSAB there, we talked a couple months ago, getting all our board members there a tablet which all your information for your meetings is on there. And then if we're on, we're on Zoom there now at the Mantua and Sebri DSAT because we figure this is going to last for a while yet there. 
It's a better system there. Uh, Kim will just forward all your information there to the tablet there, and then you got it hands on. At the end of your four years, if you don't plan on running there, the tablet's turned in and it goes to another person. It's not money that's wasted. I was talking to the staff there this week, and there's funding there that uh, Anne thinks that we can get the funding there, or Kim or, or Ruth said there, most likely the funding could we could uh, tap into it there for tablets for each individual. I believe that's a fantastic idea. Most of the meetings that I attend for this, like um, um, Sudbury Public Health and um, the community um, center in Espanola, they're all on on tablets and um, so they provide the tablets for that purpose. So I believe that's a fantastic idea. This have to charge to the internet. Well, it, it, at the DSAB there, there's some on dial up there and they uh, don't have, the, they get the tablet there, but they don't have, the, they got, they're on dial up. So they're still, uh, they, they're on their own yet there. Yeah. But, for teleconference. for teleconference there, but most uh, people have got it there and used it there. There was uh, eight on it there uh, this afternoon there, and everybody had it there. And tomorrow there's 14 there, and I don't know how many out of the 14 are going to have it there. But it's a better system, and you're in the 21st century because right now there, instead of paper, you can't say you didn't have it there because it's on the tablet, and if you read it, fine. If you don't read, it's fine. So. Could everybody think about it there? And if everybody's in favor of this there, and then we'll pursue it there, and we'll get Ruth or Ann or, or somebody to look at it. Because their firm gave me one this week there, and uh, uh, the young fellow there, it's on in the stair. Uh, it's Bruce Hilgard got one there, and we're going to comment it on tomorrow there, and it's in a rubber case there, and they're approximately $500 the one that I got. So I showed it to the staff there this week there, and it's a nice little setup. It's got all the information in the municipality there for your meeting there, and uh, you don't have to worry about paper. If you want the paper, you still have the paper there, but it's a better system, I think, and we're in the 21st century. Well, why don't we move on it right now then? Well, if everybody's in favor, fine, but everybody's not in favor, you want to think about this there? How about we try to put something together for a staff report to put on the agenda for the next meeting then? Thank you, Kim. Okay. That's better. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in favor of moving forward with it, but go ahead. Let's hear some opinions and, and go ahead and do a report if you want. Yeah. Two weeks ain't going to be ever. No, uh, yeah. oh. Any other comments for tonight, Jer? Yes, I have something. Go ahead. Um, there's a fella. Did I butt in on somebody? No. Okay. Um, there's a fella up across the tracks that's had some troubles with water at his lot line. Uh, so naturally the rain in the last couple of days. So he's contacted me several times and sent me pictures. Is And I believe he's spoken, I think, to Kim about it and I think to Jacques about it. Is there a chance maybe we could have Glenn meet with him or something and see if this can be resolved? He's got... He's got some grandkids there and he's just worried something's going to happen. So I, I can understand his point of view. I don't know if there's anything that couldn't be done, but I would certainly appreciate if uh, Glenn could maybe meet with him and discuss it. Yeah, we'll get public works up there for sure. Thank you very much. And there's a house in that area there that I want to discuss in closed session in the next the meeting there. Okay. Any other comments, anybody? I do have one uh, comment um, regarding a uh, gentleman that called from um, Agnew Lake Road. I guess um, he's been complaining for a while since our last director was here for public works and um, he was a little bit irate. He didn't really give me a lot of information, only that the road is not fixed like it should have been fixed and uh, so just letting you know. Um, the train cheaper. Yes. So I, I directed him. Road? Which road? Agnew Lake, he just said Agnew Lake Road, and I guess he was in contact with our former uh, director, and um, things were supposed to be done and they weren't done, so I told him to contact uh, the office. So 
Just yep. if any if any other one of you is here from him. Yeah. It's a okay. gentleman. We'll keep our ears open for that yeah. call. Anybody got anything else for tonight? Nope, nothing from me. No. no. Okay, be resolved this meeting be adjourned on the next regular meeting of the call of the chair. Pat, will you move that? Pat moved it. Cheryl, will you second it? I will second that. Kevin, for or against? I'm for. Linda? For. Uh, Dale? I'm in favor. Susan? For. And I'm in favor. Motion carried. Good night. Good night. Take care.